Welcome to the Growing with Fishes podcast. I'm Steve. I'm Fish. I'm Brain Grow. And he's Brain Grow. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, for usual fashion, we have a pretty botched <laughs> entry <laughs> intro. Um, we do this uh, podcast every week, or at least we try to do it every week. Um, uh, to teach everyone about uh, aquaponic and cannabis grow methods. Um, this week, uh, we were supposed to have Andromeda Seed Bank. He had something come up the last minute um, right before the show. Uh, so we're going to get try and get him on maybe next week or the week after. Uh, he just had a real last minute emergency come up right when we were starting sound check. So um, he had to, to run out last minute. So uh, he'll be back with us uh, again soon. Um, at the moment, we just have uh, Fish Ganja Guy and um, Brain Grow. Um, we're going to have uh, Marty will be with us shortly, and uh, as well as uh, um, the people here in a, in a couple of minutes. So, um, oh, and where. just to chime in real quick, it's um, actually Andromeda Strains. Uh, he's a breeder. He's not the actual uh, seed bank, but you can find his stuff over at Neptune Seed Bank. Um, oh, okay, my bad. And yeah, it's uh, no, it's great. It is your bad, but it's okay. Um, but you know, it's great genetics, man. This stuff's awesome. I've never had any herms from them, and they're super easy to work with. Yep. I don't know if you guys saw Neptune Genet um Neptune Seed Bank was recently over on Dude Grows. Um uh so definitely be sure to check them out. Uh they're big supporters of the show and uh and we love those guys over there. We try to uh you know make sure people know about them. Um definitely make sure you check out um the different uh uh online classes. I know Marty has his um uh Patreon and I have the classes out at Ouroboros if you guys are looking for uh, uh, any kind of instruction or anything like that in person. Um, Alrighty, um, today uh, we have a couple of different topics we're going to go over, but uh, uh, before we get to that, um, oh, one other quick announcement. Um, I'm going to uh, start a new news show. Um, we're going to kind of take the same group of people, whoever wants to, is available on Monday nights. We might end up moving it to Tuesday nights. I made the first one on a Monday night and realized I end up flying a lot on Mondays, so uh, probably going to end up moving it to Tuesdays. Um, but we're we're going to do a new show called Last Week in Cannabis. Um, and it'll basically be, you know, the last seven days or, you know, if we end up pushing it back a day or two that week or whatever, that whoever, since the last episode, uh, covering the big cannabis topics, we'll cover, I don't know, in between 10 and 25 topics um, per episode, depending on the week um, and what's important. <clears throat> um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes from there uh, and how much you guys love like it, uh, I had a couple of requests um, for a separate news show. Um, so, uh, because of the, all the news articles have been posting up on the uh, Aquaponic Facebook group, the Aquaponic Cannabis Growers. Um, so, we're gonna just, we ended up just deciding to make a whole separate show out of it. So, that'll be fun. Um, uh, so, definitely be sure to check that out. That'll be on Monday at uh, 6 30 p.m. Uh, so, you know, be sure not to miss that as well. Um, why don't, why don't you tell us uh, what you got uh, going on in your grow this week, uh, Brain Grow? It's pronounced Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, cool. Um, well, first of all, um, I got my uh, mushroom chamber mostly set up. The only thing I need to do is paint the lid of that thing and uh, get me a timer where I can run probably like uh, 10 minute cycles about six times a day, refreshing and pulling out the air, which will supplement the CO2 to my system. Uh, so that's pretty much done. And uh, I, today I was working on uh, adding some pulleys into my breeding box. So uh, whenever the male is done throwing up pollen, you can pull it up without uh, opening the doors and whatnot and throwing pollen over the rest of my room. So that's uh, that's what else I've been working on. And then, uh, like I was talking about a while ago, um, I've uh, started working on a new drying box. Because uh, what actually happened with my old one is I didn't have it uh, screwed into any studs on the wall. So that thing just randomly fell one night. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I think one of the fans that was on it is actually fucked up because of that. But um, 
I'll just need to get one more three inch fan to replace that. But I basically took a lot of the stuff and refurbished it and added onto this new uh, drying box, which is actually a, um, it's like a baby crib. I can't remember what they call it. It's not, it's not like a baby crib, but it's something like that. Anyway, I took that and uh, I added um, basically sidewalls all around that and then added in a little drying screen and I put uh, three drying lines across and added the fans in at the bottom, went in, uh, cocked in all the corners and whatnot. So uh, it's going to, it's going to hold the humidity a little bit better on the inside. And it was, um, it was pretty crazy because I pretty much saw evidence of how good it's doing that today. Cause I've had it closed since yesterday. And when I went and opened it, it was reading like 35% humidity, which is pretty much how it was yesterday. And uh, as soon as I opened it up, the humidity started going up and up and up because it was it was uh, it didn't rain today, but it was it was real cloudy and humid. But um, anyway, on top of the drying box, I'm setting up a uh, dry sift station. Um, so uh, I'm going to be doing a video on that. Um, today I was actually working on some of the frames already. It's it's going to be pretty cool because it's gonna it's gonna look like it's part of the part of the drying box the way I'm building it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna start out with doing a two screen system. So I'm gonna start out doing a two screen, and then I'll probably build a four screen later. And basically, I'm just going to show how cheap it is to actually uh, set up your own dry sifting station without uh, paying, you know, uh, I don't know how much uh, you're looking at paying, probably like $75 to $200 for uh, some pre-made uh, screens. And you can buy your own fabric pretty cheaply. And it's the same stuff that the uh, companies that are charging these crazy amounts of money are using so um uh, uh I've got about two weeks left in um in my flowering chamber to to do a harvest and i'll be pulling out three plants somewhere around the same time <clears throat> so i'm definitely going to be doing some dry sifting and some more bubble hash making so uh, i'll be i'll be making videos of all that stuff as well so uh, i think that's pretty much about it man Alrighty. <clears throat> Have you run into any problems or anything lately with your grow or? Uh, no, not really. It's, it's been pretty consistent. Everything's been pretty consistent in my, uh, my new breeding chambers. It's doing pretty well too. I got a couple of little cucumbers in there growing just to, uh, help out with the nitrate level. I've just been adding in, uh, fresh rainwater. Uh, actually that one hasn't been using up very much. So I would imagine it's cause I only got a couple of little seedlings in there, but, uh, I got it circulating and everything's running real good. I haven't had any clogs or anything like that. So I'm just waiting to, um, pull out this plant that my buddy has me, uh, watching and the harvest day for that is going to be around June 10th. So as soon as I pull that one out of there, probably going to stick some plants in there and we'll see how it goes awesome what about you uh fish conj guy what do you got going on yeah i'm not doing anything lately <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on steve no <laughs> um <laughs> Nothing really is uh, going on, just more than usual, just uh, taking care of the garden. I'm in week two of flush, um, got about a week left to go, and uh, everything's looking fantastic in the side-by-side. -side. Um, everybody's nice and turpy, just need to uh, get through to, uh, trim hell and uh, let them cure so I can get a couple samples down to the lab and uh, see what side uh, did better on the terpene production and the potencies. But um, yeah. Plants are happy, fish are happy. Um, as far as what else is going on, I decided um, I'm going to change up one thing in my uh, rotation that I'm going to be doing in the next few months, just so that way I have uh, Sativa to enter into the uh, Dude Grows Cup next year. I'm going to be breaking out my Durban poison seeds. Uh, 
I was going to keep them in the vault for a little while longer, but I said I've got to bring out the big guns. I should give you a... I have some really good blue hash seeds that are really killer that are, I should give you two if you're going to enter a sativa. Did you already force those on? I have a question. Have blue, I have your blue hash already. Oh, yeah. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot that I for, actually managed to force seeds on you. Yeah, what's up, Brain? <laughs> Yo, um, so what breeder does that Durban poison seeds that you have come from? Oh, God, give me one second. I'll tell you. Um, let's see. Got it in my list right here. Let's see. Open recent. Give me one second, guys. Um, menu. Fun I know it's a year, Durban. European. Durban traditionally is very low CBD. What's that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Rocking it out. Traditionally <laughs> has very low CBD. Uh, Dutch passion seeds. Okay, it, it's also supposed to have a uh, tetrahydrocannabivarin, also, so mm -hmm. the THCV, which yeah. is good for seizures and stuff like that. So that'll help. Yep, that's in most. It's also um, it's also supposed to be a uh, appetite suppressant if you have it in a large enough amount in the strain, but I, I think it's pretty small in the Durban poison, but it's there. And then Steve, you said with the uh, the blue hash, um, that's a sativa, or is it yeah, just a sativa a, dominant hybrid? It's a fifty-two fifty. So it was a hash plant, and then a blue dream, and a like a super silver haze. I think is the third strain on that one. So it's it's sativa dominant. Okay. But it's still more hybrid. Okay, so I'll put it in my hybrid yeah, category. It actually has a decent, has a decent um, CBD profile and uh, super, super resi. Really good for making hash. Okay, so that's a uh, hash plant with Blue Dream and Super Silver Haze. Okay, I'll do some uh, homework on that tonight. Maybe that'll wind up getting up going in before the end of the year. That or the uh, the Shirley Temple. It does really good outdoor too. Yeah, I'm not doing that in the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> good to know, though. Um, but yeah, that's about all that's going on over here. Um, let's see. Yeah, how, what's going on with you? Any big moves happening uh, in the future? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to end up moving to San Francisco here in the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure on the date, but um, there's a multiple different projects um, I'll be working on up there that nice. uh, I can't announce yet, but you guys will see soon. It'll be, be pretty dope. So, um, yeah, we have a I know a lot more by the end of this month as far as that goes and as far as permits and licenses go and stuff like that. Um, and then I'll, I'll have an announcement once, once that happens because before then, if I say anything before then, I'll just jinx. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, once once all that goes, through, yeah, it looks like I'll be moving up, up to San Francisco here shortly. Thanks, man. And then I uh, see we got Malik Spider in chat. Let me see if I can talk him into uh, joining us on the video. Yeah. He was a great guest last week. He was a great guest. Malik, you are a great guest. You should come on. <laughs> come on. Oh, he says he's just going to hang in the chat tonight, <laughs> but he's sharing the link. Thanks. I put him on next. It's 40 grams of languinite per 100 gallons. Oh, fish ganja guy, what did I tell you for languinite the other day when you asked me? <laughs> do I have to do this again? I'll forget my stuff out. Uh, so 40 grams of languinite, that sounds about right. Seems a little high. Well, maybe you should check. 40 grams? Well, no, that's not true because uh, Epsom salt's always really... always 
always feels like it's obscenely high when you dose it, right? I think maybe that, you should just keep. Did you ever get that dosage no, calculator put on your, other, on your on. computer? No, I've never copied it off my laptop. Hold on, let me move my keyboard. So, I was jamming out the other day, and I have I'm like in music setup mode. Give me two minutes. Slacker. I should the answer. <laughs> Anyways, it's yourselves. Take a topic. Okay, uh, so I was actually going to ask you, Steve. Um, I like how he says, talk Do you not have, and we delegate it back to him as soon as we give yeah. him the opportunity. Okay, okay, well, fuck it. I'll, I'll no, ask no, you, no, no, Fish. Fine. Do you, uh, that's fine. <laughs> um, oh, this do you, hmm. we'll talk. okay, so I see, I see you're rather enthusiastic about bubble hash, and we were talking a little bit about dry sift earlier, but have you ever yes. tried dry sift yourself, like some yes. good quality dry sift? Yeah, mm, no. and I've even done the whole, um, like uh, static cling to do the just the full melt and all to do the purification process. Yep. You can also there's a company out there that has a little electrified plate that you can use that you plug it in and it electrifies it and then you can just hold it right over it and it just kind of sucks them up. It's kind of cool. Wow. I forget what the company is called. It's pretty hardcore. But, yeah. Colorado has got a lot of the different stuff down pretty ridiculously. <laughs> Coming out with all that tech. Just for mass production stuff, yeah. Uh, as soon as my laptop wakes up. But yeah, I'll get you. I'll double check that. But yeah, actually, now that I think about it, that does sound pretty close to right. Give me a couple minutes, I'll double check it for you. At some point, I'll commit all this shit to memory. It's just a lot to remember. What about gypsum and dolomite? That was 40 grams for how many gallons? 100. For 100 gallons. Oh, okay. I guess it would depend on how much he's trying to dose in one shot, too. 40 grams is what it sounds like. Oh, well, I know, but I, I got it. Does it <laughs> <laughs> that translates into a fourth that matters. <laughs> the last couple of episodes have just been like all of us just like super high giggling and like talking occasionally. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, here we go. Okay. All right. What, do, you, what, do you have another question at all? Well, I'm trying to do the math for your thing here. What what is it you're trying well, to dose for 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 potassium or magnesium or I guess what is your primary? Do you have one? What would Steve do? I think Steve would uh, put that <laughs> dosing calculator <laughs> on the computer. <laughs> yeah, Steve should put that on his good computer. He should also cover <laughs> it in the uh, the online course. Yes, I should, which I will do. I'm actually, I actually just did. Uh, on that note, I actually just did start working on a on an online course again. That'll be uh, like hosted online, so that you can go to it any any time or day, and then you can also leave questions and stuff. It, it'll be pretty cool. So it's just a thing you were going to be doing with Marty, or? Um, th this was just uh, me putting up some of my class material up on, a, um, I don't know, something similar to like his, his Patreon. Okay. But yeah, Marty, we actually are going to reschedule the, the online class um, with Marty and I. Uh, for those that want to take a class with both of us live, um, we're just going to give Marty a couple of weeks to deal with the new Munchkin and all. Um, you know, it uh, takes him a couple of weeks to uh, to get adjusted. Yeah, no, I can understand that. So. 
Um, what were some of the other topics I had? I think you wanted to talk about edibles, which I have no experience baking. Yes, yeah, so there tell us go. about the edibles that you've made, Fish Concha Guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, first. I made some tacos tonight, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny story. Back back a couple months ago, I made a big batch of um, weed-infused rice, and nobody realized it. And there was a whole bunch of people staying at the house. So we were having a party that weekend, and they like dug into the rice for breakfast to make breakfast burritos. And everyone just like passed out within like 45 minutes. It was great. Served them right. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Yeah, I've I've actually had some crazy stories just from like people eating some of the edibles that I've made. Like I've had uh, one guy say that he was high for like twenty four hours straight, and then uh, I've had this other girl say that she didn't feel anything the night that she took it but whenever she woke up she was super high and throughout the day at work she was she was high so that was that was the craziest one that i've heard i was like wow that's crazy but um i've made um i made suckers i've made um i don't know if you know what cake pops are cake pops are pretty cool they're fucking delicious as well I've made uh, cake pops with the cake infused with cannabis as well as the outer. Um, it's like uh, what I what I use is uh, actual cocoa butter, like food grade cocoa butter. And with that, you can actually make some really awesome chocolate. Do you want to talk about um, the process? The process? Well, okay. What I'm actually For into finish. doing... For people that, you yeah, know, what I'm, uh, you know, there's lots of people out there that are just getting into it or maybe have trim from, from the first grow or something. Um, why don't you explain to them uh, how to, how to, how to do it start to finish? So be good. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, it also it also depends on what I'm making for what process that I'm using. But what I'm definitely uh, finding is very easy doing right now is I'll take. Um, whatever amount of trim um mostly i'm using trim right now but i'll take my trim and i'll go ahead and stick that in a uh, mason jar with uh everclear or whatever type of grain alcohol that you can get around you because i think everclear is actually illegal in some states if i'm not mistaken but um every clear works really awesome to get like every bit of cannabinoids extracted off of your material as possible and then i'll just take that and um what some people will do is they'll use a rice cooker for this part but what i do is um i'll just put it in a uh, double boiling uh, just put the jar the mason jar or i'll strain it out into another mason jar with a screen and then I'll strain it with a coffee filter. And then I'll take that uh, that liquid, which is the extracted cannabinoids. Uh, after, you, after you run it through the coffee filter, you're basically getting rid of all of the remaining uh, fats and lipids and waxes and stuff like that. And then what you're left with, depending on how you did it, um, a lot of times you'll pull out a lot of chlorophyll, which I don't mind because it actually adds the color into the candy as well. But um, uh, if you don't want to pull out the chlorophyll, I've, I've never tried it this way, but what I've heard you can do is you can actually just do like a really cold extraction, like from start to finish, uh, get your material, put it in the freezer, put your uh, bottle of solvents in the freezer, and uh, make sure those two things are really cold and then put them both in the jar or whatever you're using, whatever container you're using, uh, put them in there and uh, do the extraction in the freezer over uh, however amount of time you want to do it or what a lot of people will do. And what I will actually do also is I'll just shake the jar up and uh, just do it real good for like 10, 15 minutes and uh i won't even mess with the finished material after that because it really just 
doesn't have anything left in it in in my experiences but uh after that then you can take that and after you boil off all of the alcohol then um i will actually leave a little bit of alcohol just so you can uh keep the keep the uh cannabinoids and the oils suspended in the liquid and you can then uh simply add that to whatever you're making or um you can boil off all of the alcohol and then add in your uh butter or your uh coconut oil or whatever you're doing but um to make candy you definitely need to just basically leave a very small amount of alcohol because i've actually uh left too much alcohol in it in uh at one time and uh what you're doing is you're waiting for the candy to come up to 300 to 310 degrees fahrenheit and then you add in your um your uh, extract and uh if you leave in too much alcohol like i have done one time that shit will catch fire and it it uh causes a big old flame and it's it's pretty crazy <laughs> But um, yeah, you definitely uh, you want to leave a little bit of alcohol, just enough to keep your um, your oil suspended. And then you can basically do that uh, same process or um, you can add it in. Uh, what I've I've done before also is add it in whenever your mixture reaches 275. And then once you add it in there, your temperature just shoots up to 300 in a like just in a hurry. So. Uh, the candy making process is um, it's it's not so complicated. It's just you really got to you really got to keep an eye on the process. Um, so for the if you're trying to prevent the chlorophyll from um, coming out, uh, what I've found works good is um, uh, taking it and putting it in the um like a bowl and then putting your cannabis in in the in the bowl like a big giant salad bowl and then taking um dry ice either the pellets or shatter a block of ice put that on top of that and then pour your alcohol in there a little um uh, boil and then you can do like a cold boil uh a super super cold boil um with the alcohol so Oh, okay. Cool, cool. I'm gonna have to try that out. Cause uh, I've I've uh, just going through my Instagram. I've seen uh, some actual shatter that people have made using ethanol extraction, and that shit just looks. Mm -hmm. So I mean without you know just completely devoid of any chlorophyll just straight uh cannabinoids you know it just looks amazing yeah absolutely um the although i'm not gonna lie i've never had anything as good or as smooth as the the dabs i've been making with the um with the bubble hash it's just so smooth yeah, I, I really want to invest in a uh, pretty badass rosin press pretty soon or buy the equipment to make my own because I've been wanting to do rosin pressing for a long time. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot. It's easy. It's safe. It's good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, but do you have any other uh, anything else that you made or any other tips or tricks for people for edibles? And then I'll uh, talk about some of my stuff oh, as far as that goes. Um, I think uh, for edibles, I think for the most part, people just probably overthink it. And that's that's what I feel like I was doing in the first in the when I started doing it. So when I started doing it, I was I was using uh, like coconut oil extraction, just doing it uh, like over eight hours or something like that at a really low heat. 
And um, like one thing that I started doing is I'll actually just blend up all of the cannabis with the coconut oil while it's really hot. And I will just leave it in there like that and then just decarboxylate it beforehand, which uh, whenever you decarboxylate it, I don't know if uh, everybody knows what that means, but you're basically just um, getting rid of the extra carbon molecule and activating the cannabis um, to be eaten. But um, isn't it also yeah, converting um, a lot of just don't overthink it is what I would say. THC. What's that? Isn't it also converting a lot of the THCA to the usable form of THC? Right. That's that's what I was that's what I was meaning. I feel you. I feel you. But I mean, uh, there's there's a lot of ways to do it, and that's that's one reason why um, right now I'm preferring to just use the alcohol to extract it. And then use the heat to boil it off because you're doing uh, killing two birds with one stone. Whenever you're boiling off the alcohol, you're also decarboxylating the material. So that's probably probably my favorite method right now. Nice. One second, I'm gonna get a <clears throat> get a couple other people here into the show. Shit, I made some pretty crazy stuff, man. Like, I've also made some, uh, like, almond butter cups. Like, basically, like, peanut butter cups, but, like, almond butter cups. Those are pretty badass. Peanut butter cookies. Mm -hmm. um, shit, I've made um, a pizza using trim as well. I just added it into the uh, pizza sauce, and that came out freaking amazing. I just shared that with some buddies of mine and we're pretty uh pretty sedated for a pretty good long while so that's pretty much the 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 main effect that I found that edibles have on me is like I don't really get like a crazy high like a lot of people do but I do get just super super couch lock from uh just any kind of edibles that I have I've I've tried edibles from dispensaries and like those like don't even do anything at all to me but i mean a lot of those are uh so far regulated down that the dose is too small to do anything who uh uses it heavily recreationally or otherwise you know so so um so a couple of points that i wanted to touch on is uh, decarboxylation so decarboxylation is uh, breaking down your, your larger THC chains um, down to uh, THC9, which is the one that um, will transfer the best. Um, or it also converts, you know, your THCA um, to D THC. So um, it'll also convert some of your THC to CBN as well. Um, but the best way to do it is take your trim, grind it all up, or at least pick it off the stems or spread it out as you know the th thin as you can on a cookie sheet, uh, and then put it in the oven for 200, you know, between 215 and 220 degrees um, for about 45 minutes, uh, and usually that'll um, uh, decarboxylate it, um, and and. Uh, it, You'll, you'll notice a big difference. I mean, you'll get a 15 to 30 percent, you know, increase in potency from your, your edibles when you do that. And then you take all that trim and then either put it in a double boiler with alcohol. Uh, if you're going to do tincture, um, put it in the top half of the double boiler, uh, you know, cook it down. Uh, um, I, what I like to do with the double boiler is get one of those metal coffee screens, put that in the top of the double boiler, put your cannabis, you know, your decarboxylated cannabis inside the metal coffee filter in the top through uh, and strain and never and almost work like a tea bag. Um, it works a lot better to separate. Uh, and then once it gets down pretty low, uh, just make sure you're well ventilated. Um, you know, make sure your fans are going in your almost work kitchen. Like a tea bag. You know, you don't want to cook off a bunch of uh, alcohol in your kitchen. Uh, and then, uh, 
Somebody's gotten some feedback here. Yo, Coyote, you're getting a lot of feedback, bro. Just fixed it. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, and then uh, uh, lost my train of thought. What did I say? <laughs> I was talking about making. Uh, making sure your pans are going. I think you're talking about. Oh yeah, making sure your fans are going in your kitchen because when you're cooking off alcohol, to make sure the, the alcohol vapor is definitely uh, not something you want. You know, don't definitely don't do it in a, in a sealed up room on a hot day or something like that and smoke a joint while you're doing it. You'll have a bad day. <laughs> um, you know, you also have a new haircut, so. Then you'll end up in jail, probably. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends how far in the boonies you live. Um, <laughs> we actually have a question in chat from uh, somebody called King of Here. Uh, maybe you want to field that one? Sure. Are there dangerous chemicals on marijuana buds? Um, it entirely depends on who processes it. Um, there are some companies out there that are using questionable uh, cannabis pesticides. Um, Avid, you know, Guardian. Um, Avid Guardian Eagle 20. Um, those are toxic. And the other thing is, is that a lot, uh, only a handful of states have really set up their stuff. They all to account, like Colorado and Oregon have to account for concentration. So if you take, you know, some buds and you turn it into something like something like this. Okay. Um, then you you're concentrating the cannabis the pesticides as well so um that can also you know cause problems well it's interesting because a lot of people believe that once you go through that process i've read on the forum before people talking about making rick simpson oil and stuff like that talking about well when you put it through the cooking process all that goes away and you just gave a good point that these toxic chemicals or pesticides don't go away Actually, well, especially in alcohol, a lot of these would happily transfer into the alcohol when you're making a tincture. You know, that's kind of ridiculous to think that yep. they're going to cook. Off. Some of them will, for sure. Some of them won't play nice with the alcohol and they'll denature, but <laughs> some of them will not. Some of them will absolutely transfer. It just depends on exactly what it is that you're <laughs> you're doing. Um, neem oil and high concentrations are toxic. Um, um, uh, What's the other one? Eagle 20 turns into arsenic, which is also dangerous. Um, you know, so uh, that's why I like to do the tinctures. Um, and then for butter, I like to take all my stuff, decarboxylate it, and then um, put it into, oh, there you go. Um, and then put it into uh, uh, just a big pan, like a big with, with butter in it. <laughs> And I'll cook it down for maybe an hour, hour and 20 minutes uh, on a simmer. Um, and then once it's done, um, uh, after that, I'll strain it, uh, usually through some paper coffee filters or metal coffee filter. Uh, strain it real well. And then um, uh, take that. And then I'll usually use that to cook two or three batches, usually three batches of butter uh, from that cannabis. And it works really well. Hey, but uh, honestly, if you want to make sure that there's no dangerous or nasty chemicals on your buds and you want to be 100%, the grow absolute safest way is just grow your own. Yep. There's no, I mean, no way a person is going to sneak in your garden at night and just spray some nastiness on it. Unless, unless you're Bill Nye. You guys know about yeah, that? Yeah, it really all... <laughs> no, Bill what Nye. happened with Bill Nye? Bill Nye's wife snuck into his garden and sprayed all his plants with Roundup. She got charged with uh, like a chemical chemical agent in a in a in a uh, in an assault or something like that, and she's got like twenty years or something like that. something crazy. What kind of garden was Bill Nye growing? Just a normal vegetable garden. Oh, he just okay. Broke up with her and she went crazy. So. <laughs> wow. Um, but yeah, so that's how I do that. And then for the coconut oil, the best way to do that is to set it up in like a crock pot and then set it on low. And, you know, let that go for a couple days, um, just on low with the coconut oil, and that'll infuse really well. And you can do that three to five days, works really good. 
you know, ideally like 120, 130, 150 degrees. Here's going to be low setting. Your, uh, a crock pot, unless you get a digital one, or you know, one of the which works really, really, really well. You can also. We just had a really good question uh, regarding the coconut oil in chat. Um, sure. This is something that I know myself and a lot of people have wondered about as far as the dosing and knowing what you're doing. Um, and Stony, I definitely have no clue as I don't make edibles, but it sounds like Steve and Brain may have some input on this. Well, this is a question is my wife and I do a lot of coconut oil. How are you guys measuring dosage in your edibles? I know the concentrations per serving. Um, I kind of know how much a pound of trim or a pound of flour is going to do um, when I make a big batch of something. It just depends on what... I don't know. I, I'm used to just making huge amounts, so I, times that I know my, my ratios are. Um, I know I usually want to do about two ounces um, for for four pounds uh, of butter. You can, that'll work just fine. Uh, if you just first two, I'm um, sorry, two ounces per pound per pound. Four sticks, yeah, four sticks for two ounces. But is that also influenced by the potency of the strain that the trim came from, or? No, just yeah, we do just do it for a little bit longer. Um, and then that, that's all. Um, but, okay. you know, in general, um, I use trim run or, or, you know, fluffier stuff or popcorn bud, you know, the larfy stuff at the bottom um, uh, is definitely uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what you make it from. Thanks. Uh, um. In, in my opinion, I feel like if you really want to be able to titrate the dose accurately, you should probably use um, use flour, you know. Yep. And if you're looking for something as a as a pretty low dose, then uh, you can probably start with like a like a half ounce per pound of butter, which I think actually, if I'm not mistaken, a pound of butter is two sticks because hey no 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 that's right you're right uh, a pound is is four sticks but yeah like a, a half ounce per per pound is what i would start out with if you're looking for something real low because that'll give you let's see um half ounce 14 grams you're looking at uh somewhere between like 2000 to 2500 total milligrams Divide that by like four sticks of butter, and you're looking at like five to six hundred milligrams per stick. So, and it also it also depends on the potency of your flour. You know, if you're able to to know exactly what the uh, THC percentage and all that stuff is, then that that helps you um, calculate the dosage that much more accurately. If anybody's wondering, we are actually very scientific about how we go about this, seeing as how we're using sticks of butter as a unit of measurement. I just so want to break just, that out there. Throw, yeah. Throw a pound in. Well, and like, this is a butter, and you're good. You really. use like a fistful of butter. <laughs> <laughs> just get a handful. Yeah, you just fill your crock pot, you know, two thirds of the way up with butter. <laughs> Fill, fill, fill it up with weed until it's almost to the top. Put the top on, just let that rip. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, you can do that, but... Very scientific. <laughs> um, yeah. <it's> <laughs> yeah butter, oil, tinctures, coconut butter, it's another good one you can do if you want something for a topical. Nice. So... What uh, we just had a coyote grow join us. Um, what have you got going on? Hey, how's it going? <clears throat> uh, I'm just sitting in my tent right now. I actually, I don't know if uh, I'm uh, was talking to you on Facebook on the cannabis grows group, and I had that algae bloom, so I got rid of the. Well, I didn't get rid of the algae bloom. It's still there, but I. 
added an extra, I don't know, I would say 70 gallons to my system, added an extra barrel in, and my sump tank was really low too. And then kind of just reworked the entire garden. And uh, so I'm still trying to work out the kinks right now. Uh, other than that, uh, I could, here, yeah, I'll turn on my video, show you. Right here's a plant I took. Can you see it? Yeah, it looks really nice. Yeah, if you can see, I topped it here per one of your videos, Steve. I don't know, it was just a topping video. I clicked on it, it was on my feed, and I was like, I'm going to go do that to that plant. So it seems to be working out. This was a bag seed from a pretty experienced grower, but I don't know what the strain was called. And if you just touch the stem a little bit and smell your fingers, it smells great super fruity but here's my aeroponic system and that uh kind of box container there sprayers going this one's been thriving really well i'm about to take clones from her and uh set up uh <clears throat> Uh, kind of let the other plant that was sitting next to it catch up in, in growth and then uh, probably flower it out in about a month or two. Yeah, that's awesome. about it. Is it the, the topping video, the one with the little baby plants? Uh, man, I forget. I was probably blazed at like in the middle of the night and I just saw it and I was like, I'm going to go do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how I shot that video. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm motivated. Do that like 1 a.m. Yeah. I finished my third beer. Time to make a video. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Actually, maybe you guys can uh, share a, maybe a little advice here. I've got... I try, I've got these hydro buckets all hooked up. Um, I don't know if you can see. And I had three of them all hooked up, and they were onto a siphon. And they would, uh, you know, fill up to a certain height, you know, on a loop siphon, drain out. And then I was trying to get that to drain into my aero tank, which was working pretty well. But since I added the, the extra water, it's, uh, you know, it's too much for the system. Um, but it would drain into my aero tank. And after it would drain into my aero tank, that had a set siphon on it. Um, that it would, once it break the siphon, it would drain to a certain amount. And then, you know, fill back up. But it would keep at a constant height. But I'm, like, running two siphons off of these... Uh, these uh, hydro buckets and uh you know i don't think it's enough i think i need to go to a giant grow bed finally you can make those work no problem the other option you could have is taking uh um uh taking a sump and then running um you know another trash can or another something else that holds the water volume do it to make this get a couple of extra gallons out of it or act maybe as an in-between um, manifold between that and their uh, and your sump as long as it ha you know was the same height uh, could buy you that couple of extra gallons you need okay yeah I'll uh, I'll do a little more research I'll take a better video and post it on Facebook maybe you can uh, give me a, once you see the whole setup I've got I drilled out all the buckets too I put in like three quarter three quarter inch uh, tubing and put it on both sides of the buckets as well just to get the flow going through but my I'm using a single pump and I think that I just can't get that flow right for it to completely go out but I'm sure I'm missing up on the fundamentals right now of siphoning so I probably got to go review that that's all right loop siphons work good too yeah bell siphons, bell siphons can be a little less finicky but um, if oh. I was running the setup that you have, I would probably just do overflows, buckets, that run to an overflow pipe 
and set it up on a timer based system the way that you have it set up. Okay. Yeah. And it's going to work better for you. Uh, just the way that you have the light room laid out and the plumbing that you have, you might end up having to add a little bit more plumbing. Okay. Right, that drain, but you know, if you put a, a drain at the max height that you want that thing to flood at, you know, running down to a main, even you know, a two inch pipe that they run all run to one two inch pipe, you know, run that back to your sump or something like that. You know, that would work just fine as well. As long, it just, I guess, it would also depend on your height as well, but. Yeah, no, I, I think I could do a constant height on a timer thing. I mean, I had them on timers before, and when I got the three buckets to work on a siphon, I just kind of, I guess, got tunnel vision and thought that was the only way. Well, it, it's good, but the, they're better because the timer is something else, the mechanical, that can fail. So you double your chances of something going wrong by using a timer. Yeah. That's why using a bell siphon or a loop siphon is better when you can. Um, but for your the way that you have your setup, you know it it just be you know just make sure you're checking that thing regularly and repeat. Yeah, okay. definitely. The fewer fail points you have around, the better. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just look at me. I've got like eight different timers going, so I'm always stressed yep. out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got a shitload of timers yeah, in my room too. This is why. This is why when I do the bigger, anytime I do bigger grow or my own personal grows, I put a little tape, yellow or white masking tape on all the cords so that what it, what it goes to. And then on all the outlets, you know, I have what it is. And then I have, I try to always put a sub panel in whenever I have it all labeled because then it's something goes weird with the electrical because you have a fire or not know what equipment's going on or how to troubleshoot what's going on or you know if usually what happens is you're not home home and someone else is caring for your grow because you're on vacation and some shit happens and they don't know which one to shut off so they shut off the whole thing and then everything dies or you know just stupid shit like that so. yep. <laughs> All right, guys, I got to cut out. I got to go tend to the plants. Um, Steve, I will talk to you soon. Uh, Coyote, Brain, Roger, welcome back. And uh, yeah, everybody yeah, watching, yeah. I will uh, talk to you soon. Awesome. And, uh, Later, fish. We'll, see next week. Um, well, hopefully I'm MFP on next week, or uh, unless something changes. It looks yeah. like we maybe on with us next week. We might be, uh, the time might be a little bit earlier. On. Might still do a normal normal time show. <laughs> Doing an interview with them or just the portion with them earlier in the day, maybe an hour or two earlier, um, so everyone is aware. Where are they out of? Colorado. Where are they out of? He's based in Colorado. Oh, okay. What's new with you? Talking about me? Yeah. Oh, I've just been involved. I've been. Bouncing around the websites, trying to—I'm uh, still trying to get my website up. So I've been basically installing and testing and coding for the last two or three days, fighting with the old lady and uh, you know, watching my new sprouts pop up. I'm real happy about that. 100% uh, propagation and five one and a half inch rock wall cubes. So there you go. Once again, Looking for a solution with your your babies. I uh, let them get till they get a, start getting a, 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 where I see the tap root come out the bottom, and it's already out there in three or four days usually. I see the rock wool, and I gave it an extra day or two, just kept damp with a uh, neutral pH water, and uh, I'm I'm getting I gave them a dose of Liquid Karma this morning. I love using um, Botanicare Liquid Karma when I'm with my seedlings. It gets them off to a really fantastic start, and uh, I've been using it for a long time. Uh, back in the day when I started, everybody said, "Yo, you got to use what is it? A Super Thrive? You know, you got to have Super Thrive." You gotta, well, I had to. I had a gal at a, one of the hydro stores out in California tell me about how you know that um, that the liquid karma was real. The res it was a you know made the res happy, and you know it's got all kinds of beneficial little elements in it, and it's not very strong. And had excellent select, uh, excellent starts because I'm, I give it. 
liquid karma. And uh, now they'll grow about a foot in the, probably the next few days, uh, maybe a week at the most, and they'll be ready to go into one, one, one uh, because I'm doing soilless grows right now. I'm not doing hydro or aquaponics, I'm doing pro mix. And then experiment with that and getting a bit of that, but uh, uh, I'm going to put them in one gallon pots probably uh, next weekend. Probably next weekend they'll go to one gallon pots. I'll leave them under my T5s all week long and let them get really nice and fat and healthy. So nice. That's what that's what I use. That's what I do when I start out. I know you're getting ready to do a thing on uh, propagation. We've talked about it a couple of times. How's that coming? Yeah, I have, uh, uh, we have a whole bunch of scripts. <laughs> A bunch of new videos I'm going to be doing, a um, bunch of how-to videos and a bunch of informational videos and what the hell not to use videos and stuff like that. I've been working, working last night actually, and some, late last night on some scripts when I couldn't sleep on that. So I got uh, that stuff. I'm going to try and shoot that probably tomorrow uh, awesome. and have those coming out. That would be cool. I've done a couple yeah. videos lately on my Facebook page that I've opened up for the rain gutter grow system. And so I could teach them, you know, other things, how to supplement it instead of just relying on water um, and compost. And um, and uh, I've had a pretty good bunch of people join. We haven't done a whole lot. One guy's got a pretty nice greenhouse, pretty cool. And uh, but really, what I so I've already started. I started. I did a uh, video on uh, using ProMix and your uh, Pro 38 cell trays. You know what I'm talking about? The round, like mm -hmm. two inch net pots been in them. You can you can put 38 net pots in them. And uh, or two inch net pots perfectly. So, so I do that and then I fill it up with pro mix and I start, that's how I started on my pumpkins. You know, it all came out really, really good. I did a, a video on that and, uh, and a video on using Oasis to start, you know, like uh, tomatoes and peppers and stuff. So, I did that about a couple months ago. Not real professional or anything like that. It's me out in the yard, you know, talking to, into my Zoom camera and I'm with next to the table where I'm doing it. About simple as it gets but that's where i'm at right now trying to finish the fence you know I'm, oh i bought oh guess what i bought in the spirit of maybe having an aquaponic you know thing going on out there which mine will be vegetables because i'm not in a legal state where i can do this um but i've uh, we've talked to a lot of my ideas about using aquaponics in a big way in a pool and stuff well i bought two hoop vendors the other day so as soon as they get here, I'll be able to take uh, one and three eighths top rail fencing, and in a few hours have a, 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 a twelve, a sixteen, or a twenty foot wide hoop house as long as I want. I can build it in ten foot sections, nice. you know, and it's really cool. You can put it on a, like a, a table, like a, it's, it's designed where you can put it, you can screw it down on a picnic table. But I got a seven by twelve trailer, you know, flatbed trailer with with a five quarter board deck board on it. I'll be able to screw this down to there, and then you just feed it through to the marks where you can mark it certain and start bending it, and you can bend a perfect hoop every time, and you know by hand. And, and so I'm going to be able to get into that little. Instead of having people have to worry about going to buy a greenhouse, I've been trying to sell for years doing the. Uh, hey, I I come over to your house, you know, and uh, help you design the system for your needs, and you know, and, and uh, basically. Uh, uh, design and, and implement a hydroponic system in your greenhouse. And I had a few bites, but what I found was people, well, number one, greenhouses are real expensive. So once they start seeing what the cost of this is, they, a lot of people balk. Nice, nice picture. A lot of people balk at that. Uh, but but now with this, I'll be able to actually go to just a simple, you know, because it uh, take a 20, I think I figured out a 20 foot, just to build the hoops alone would be about 250 bucks. You know, then you have to put purlins on it. Now you can do that with the, you can do that with the galvanized metal too, or you could use one by two fern strips or whatever you come up with. But it's getting to where average homeowner could afford to have a pretty nice greenhouse, you know, or cold, you cold frame, whatever you want to call it, hoop house, and uh, and that would work. And that, well, I tell you what, if I lived in a state where you could grow outdoors, man, I tell you what, I'd be in business now. Uh, but that's what I'm doing, I guess. You asked me what I'm doing. Who's got the glasses? I don't think I met you before. Hi, I'm Roger Lightwood. We met on the 420 podcast. Oh, okay. Which, what, what's your name? Uh, Kurt. Oh, I mean, on, uh, okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, that's what I went by on the, on the 420 podcast. 
but uh, I'm the fellow veteran like you. Oh, just just another guy that got invited sooner or later. Right. <laughs> that reminds me. Uh, remind me after the show, we're looking to start up like a veterans cannabis grow show where we get veteran growers and, you know, maybe one or two other people on the show each episode uh, that can answer questions for, for and just have oriented. I'm trying to start that off and about that the last two weeks. So um, that's one of the other things I'm going to try and do that. I have the new show and have this, uh, this show uh, every week and try to just do the three of those, maybe do the veterans one on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesdays was kind of what I was thinking. Um, it's not set in stone yet, but that's kind of the the rough game plan. So oh, uh, we're just trying to find one. Keep me in the loop. I'm down. We're, we're trying to find one or two other people that can be there. You know, eighty percent of the time, time or so. Um, I don't know. Probably the same time we do the normal. You know, the other ones. I have a staff meeting every Wednesday at nine fifteen for my website. But I can move okay. that. I, I, we're pretty easy going. I'd like to be a part of it because I got a whole form to draw experienced growers from. You know? There's a bunch of killer, yeah. killer guys on the forum. I could ask to be on the podcast that know their that know their shit. You know, or do their own method or whatever. You know, it'd be cool to have a, a more veterans oriented show. You know, so there is a. I was looking around online. There really isn't a veterans only a podcast that I could find. What about that one that Marty was talking about? I never. I don't know. I, I listened to it a few times and never really caught, sparked my interest. I know there was uh, uh, I didn't know there was, we had the Weed for Warriors guy on and, the, uh, and stuff, but. Yeah, I thought it was, I don't know. I thought there was a whole little group with that. I don't Did know. I to their like, thing, but I don't know. It wasn't for me. Okay. Yeah, I know there's different, uh, um, uh, uh, lean more towards Weed for Warriors, some are more for Grow for Vets, some don't like either one and kind of do their own thing. I know there's one or two other organizations out there now um, uh, and help to help them. But um, I know both groups um, will help veterans, um, you know, go to, to the dispensary, go to the doctor, get their, their permits, get their equipment you know, get the right pieces, right bongs, explain to them the stuff. So, you know, different kinds of concentrates, how they can help them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I just, I mean, all together, I guess with cannabis, I just, you know, with the American Legion reaching out, you know, wanting to decriminalize and, you know, deschedule, you know, it, with something that just helps i'm just you know i'm just passionate about it i guess it just kind of gets me a little emotional you know that our government keeps us away from you know from people who need it you know and it's it's not a big deal just let it happen you know and people you know find it on their own um i was say more chat what does hemp have um i'm not sure what that means um, where, where to find hemp seeds to grow. Um, if you're trying to find them, um, man, that's a good question. Uh, I have to, I have to look on, I have to look online or you can go to Nebraska and, uh, drive down the road. Pretty awesome hemp seed, uh, and get your seed that way. Um, that's a good idea. That's a good drive down the road. Yeah, we when we were breeding some some hemp strains in Colorado, you know, allegedly we might have uh, gone up to Nebraska and and picked up a couple of uh, of seeds from their better stuff to cross breed, to back breed cross with uh, some of the other stuff that we were doing over the winter, so we had good seed stock for the spring. And just run it all indoor over the winter just to make your seed stock, and then you got to I don't know. It worked out well. We're able to, to really improve the, the cold tolerance of it. I don't know if you guys are aware, but there's still a lot of wild hemp that grows in certain parts of the country from back when, you know, it was just never fully eradicated from back when they grew it in the thirties and stuff like that. Um, you know, they had you know, hemp stalks that were 20, 30, 40 feet tall. So, 
Um, you don't see anything like that yet uh, coming back genetically um, as far as hemp production. So it would be interesting to see what happens when you have plants that are that size. Now, I would imagine something like that if it also had CBD, you know, uh, potential, you know, then you have a uh, just ridiculous, you know, cannabinoid factories at that point. It'd be, be kind of cool to see. Oh, shit. What did you do? I just sat on my mother. Uh oh. What? Not a big deal. She's huge and she has too many branches on her already. Uh, just cut them off real quick. Throw it in water. You drink them in the clones after the show. That that didn't work for me. I'm taking a branch of coke off. Just like Marty's method. That didn't work for me. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> I was like telling my uh, uh, one of my people I work with. Um, he was like, oh, we'll just cut it off and we'll throw it in one of the media beds and it'll root that way. And I was like, no, nah, there's lots of microbes and it's not a good way to do it. Fucking sure enough, like, the thing's growing ridiculously well and all of the ones that he cut and rooted, and I'm just like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> it never works for me, but the guy that's never, doesn't really hardly done it before, it's stellar luck with it. And I'm like, right. And I've only clung three times. One was kind of that method, and then the other time was uh, I just put it right into dirt, and it seemed to work. I don't know. Yeah. Usually I didn't lose one. I've taken broken branch and stuck it right into a pot, like an old pot of soil that I wasn't using again. I hadn't pre-processed, but, you know, again, cleaned it up. And just It was sitting in the corner of the grow room, and it broke a branch off. I just wet it down like in a, like I made a hole by wetting it with hydro and then stuffed it down in there, and it rooted and made a nice plant, and I got clones off of it and everything. Nice. I wanted to try to air layer. Have you done that, Steve? Air layer? Have you heard of that? I probably know it as a different term. Do you want to explain? Um, so you basically, what, like, take a branch <laughs> of your mother, like a big branch, and shave it down, put some cloning gel on it, wrap dirt around the branch. You don't remove the branch from the main plant, and then apparently it blows out some roots. Oh, into the yeah, so that's the way that they, they graft new trees off of fruit trees. It's the same concept. Yeah, right. Um, the best way to do it is you scratch the branch, um, put cloning gel on it and then put um, like peat moss on it and then yep. wrap it in burlap and then keep it real wet and then you can put like tin foil on the outside just to keep it from getting light and to keep it moist. Um, and if you can't find burlap, I find that gauze works real good for these situations. Yep. Gauze, you can get gauze anywhere and then you can wrap the gauze around. It'll also be able to be kept wet and hold the peat moss in place and exactly how you want to do it. Okay. I got a bunch of old gauze hanging around <laughs> well you might not want to use that crusty stuff use the use the bloody gauze you know <laughs> a, little, a little extra iron for the yeah right like well, them, them, them no way, man. all, all that stuff down. expired like two years ago i saw i had i threw it all out because i don't want to show that sh i don't know i don't know what it does just got rid of it all them damn hippie girls up in humboldt putting their blood on their plants uh, we were talking about that in the other episode. Yeah, you made me cringe when I was listening to that. Dude. <laughs> yeah, that was some of the wackest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, you got to try it. I mean, if it was somehow the miracle, I don't know, the miracle cure for plants or whatever, I mean, we wouldn't be hating on it. We'd be trying to make money Wait, on it. Somehow I must have missed that. What are y'all talking <laughs> about now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't even think it's worth going. Yeah, I don't into even. It. I don't even know if we want to go back to it. Um, <laughs> uh, Jose Morales says thanks. Uh, what can hemp be used for? Was question. Uh, I think I've heard of hemp plastic. Um, you can make fifty-five thousand different products from hemp. Everything from food products, clothing, um, adhesives, oil. building materials, oils, lubricants. Yeah. Um, clothing. Mm, clothing. You say clothing? Yeah. Clothing. It's six times as strong as cotton. It's six yeah. times as strong as cotton. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's just countless things you can make from it. Yep. You can Miracle eat the seeds. Plant. You know, the seeds are good for you if you eat them. Um, the seed flour is really good, gluten-free flour. 
Um, I, I had some uh, hemp protein that expired that I was just taking as a supplement. And now I, I just feed that to my dubia roaches. They love that stuff. Oh, hell yeah, dubia roaches are great. I'm glad yeah. you're talking about dubia roaches and hissing cockroaches. They're great for fish food. Yeah, um, so super, how do you prepare them? Because my, uh, oh. my fish aren't big enough to take them whole. So what I do is I just uh, put them in a big ass Ziploc uh, and then, um, well, you know, I have them in a big container, uh, but I'll pull up just a paper towel roll, you know, that has them in it, shake them down. And then if there's lots of adults in them, you can kind of separate them in the bag with your thumbs. I mean, it's easy to explain. It's, it's not very hard in the plastic bag. And then you can kind of pop the adults back in and keep, take the babies and feed them off if you want that way. But what I do is uh, once I separate them, I close the Ziploc, throw it in the freezer for usually like half an hour, and it kills them all. And then I feed them to them so they're not running around the grow. Right. All right. I got, I got the dubias. Uh, they'll eat everything. They'll eat your root balls. They'll eat the leaves. And their waste is really good as compost. You know, um, when you do clean them out, what I suggest is clean them out outside because when you clean them out, there will be some eggs that you miss. When you take the compost, take it all, put it in like a bag and throw it in your freezer and freeze it so you kill all the eggs. Uh, and then you can take it and use it as compost and mix it in as an amendment. But they're, it's super high in phosphorus, super high in uh, calcium. It's a really, really good, like it, it's, it's, it's like a supercharged bat guano. It's a really, really good uh, material to work with as far as their guano as well. I, I just yeah. threw it on some of my seedlings and my uh, dual root zone on my aero tanks. Um, yeah, I use a lot of it. And they, they produce a lot too, which is pretty – Pretty awesome. Did you did you mean their waste is full of calcium? Yep, yep. You can okay. also just grind them up and use them as a fertilizer too. Yeah, no, the dead ones. Yeah, they just they just get ground up with their waste. Oh, you actually have dead ones. Oh, my my colonies have always been so big they just immediately eat them. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I had the yard, you can take. You know, I usually take whatever's left over in the fridge if it's not meat and toss it in there. If it's starting to go bad, oh, just feed it to them. Um, I, I don't know how you have yours in the container, but what I always do is have them in a fish tank, usually like a, a taller fish tank, maybe something like a 30 gallon or a 29 gallon. And just put, um, or you, know, you can, obviously something bigger is fine. Um, if you're in a cold climate, put them in, in like a top loading freezer uh, and then put them in a, a, a two. It was just an aquarium, like a two-inch band of Vaseline, and if it's in a, and that will keep them in, uh, and then I, you know, put a couple <laughs> of heat, heating pads underneath, uh, and then when I do the big, the big batches in the freezers, um, we'll get some reptile heating pads, throw them in the bottom, and then put Vaseline, uh, uh, like a four-inch band of Vaseline across the top of the freezer, uh, and we'll have, you know, forty thousand of them, thirty thousand of them in there. Wow. Yeah, I, I got about <laughs> 300 of them back in uh, uh, August last year, and they just started breeding probably three months ago. And the dubias, They're I believe, cold. they give uh, live birth. They're too cold. They're too cold right now? Yeah, I, I so what I do is I keep all my roaches at, um, you know, 85 to 90 uh, and they'll breed the, like gangbusters. Like you will, yeah. you will. And the other cool thing is you can sell them. Uh, the other reason why you should think about breeding these is because you can sell them on Craigslist. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of people that bearded dragons, monitor lizards, uh, uh, exotic birds, uh, all of them. Really? Oh yeah, and people will buy them for that at, for for feed chickens. Can can, um, can you spell that out in the? Can you, I'm sorry. Can you spell that out for us in the chat? Like on the website? The what sure. what the. Exactly. I'm sorry. It's, to dubia, it's called a dubia roach. D U B I A. Then the other one is the Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Uh, okay. There's a couple of different types of Madagascar hissing cockroaches. There's a, a smaller one, uh, kind of a, a smaller being a relative term. Um, and then they have like a normal medium size, which is a decent size. And then they have these jumbo ones now that are enormous. Um, that depending on the size of your fish and what kind of fish you're feeding. Um, you know, you get the size appropriate ones, but all of them breed pretty readily. Um, again, you can sell all of them back to the pet trade as well. 
um, and get additional income that way. Uh, or feed your chickens. You know, if you got chickens, they love them. And they're really good, real high in calcium, real high in protein, real high in fat. Um, just a really well-rounded food. Yeah, I'm really trying to – right oh, now, yeah. I feel like, you know, I want to be self-sustaining, you know, and self-sustaining for the garden, things like that, and those – and, you know, for the fish food and things like that. So I think I'm going to take it another year of not feeding them off too much and build up my call anymore. Or maybe, like you said, I need to – you know, I just recently got, you know, within the last few months, got a stable environment. So that's probably why they started breeding on for me. But I fed off a lot of the males uh, just to get the, the ratios correct. Yep. Yeah, if you have too many males, they'll fight and they'll usually start murdering each other. But they kind of yeah, solve the problem pretty quickly. <laughs> it's no, it's crazy. When my, um, when the, the hissing cockroaches would go into battle, like they, You'll notice with the hissing, the hissers especially, there'll be one king. There'll be one male that's larger than the rest, uh, like hormonally or whatever ends up bigger. And he's the one that breeds with the most of the other females. And even in, if you have, you can have 2,000 of them and this will still be the case. It's kind of crazy. Um, but once in a while, someone want, they'll battle. I've been woken up from my sleep when it's on the other end of the house with two <laughs> doors shut between it because of the just <laughs> just between them hissing and just the moving mass of like undulating organic or like matter. matter. Organic matter. It just sounded. <laughs> I, you know, it sounded like a. a when I, the first thing I thought of was a pipe broke, like there was rushing water or something like that. The sound wise, like that's what it sounded like. It was the most bizarre thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I've heard them do that three or four times now where, you know, they're just going to the swarm mode. It's weird. You should film it. We can make a horror play. Well, you know, there's a, I don't know if you've ever seen this, there's a, uh, especially if you're in a stone and watching the show, uh, you want to send it to YouTube. Um, Check out, there's the Japanese uh, bug fighting. Oh, videos. dude, I love that. The Japanese bug fights where they take the different exotic insects and they pit them against each other. Uh, those are always kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, those yeah, I started uh, talking about roaches and we went down to one viewer. Fuck. <laughs> 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 well, let's kill, let's kill him too. You know what I got out of that discussion about roaches? That very much is the same as the waste and the skeleton and everything that i can't remember the fellow's name from texas that had the aquaponics the guest that was on a couple weeks ago and he talked about he used crawfish and the crawfish also were high in calcium and phosphorus yep. i yeah. picked that up when you were talking yep. about that yeah, anything else? So, yep, they're both yeah. made of uh shatan they're uh, exoskeletons primarily right. like 80 some percent shatan which is uh shatan is was it 68 percent or 72 percent calcium carbonate so yeah, that's. I love the yeah. bug. Okay. The bug. Tell the yeah. bug. My uh, my crayfish traps. I haven't had much luck with them. I got to find some new creeks or aliens. Said I gotta get a new uh, try some different bait. Where are you located? At? In I'm in uh, Washington. Oh, Washington. Never mind. I was gonna say I had a lot of luck in um, you know, see if you can find a slightly warmer water trout lake or bass lake yeah. nearby. That's uh, and then and that generally is what I've had good luck with. Yeah, I mean that's where that's where I threw it in. I mean I don't, I don't know if the water's quite warm yet. I mean I don't know how the weather's been for you guys, but it's man, it just seemed like summer kicked off a week ago out here. I mean it hasn't been good weather. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, we're in the I'm 90s. In SoCal, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm I'm in Carolinas and and uh, and we've been in the 90s. Yeah, it's been. It's either been raining or hot as hell. Yeah, we don't have we have rain and not rain, <laughs> <laughs> and it's been mostly mostly not rain. <laughs> yeah, depends on the little, side of the map you live on. A little cloudy today, but um, we have another question from chat. Jose Morales, what is a good soil mix for dual root zone? Um, I find uh, you know any any rich soil mix. Um, uh, I like to include uh, worm casings to make sure the plants have an early nitrogen source. Um, it also helps with the microbial balance. Um, a little bit of uh, uh, 
rice husk biochar can also be beneficial uh, to the soil mix as well. Um, and mushroom then, uh, what was that? I'm mushroom sorry? Yeah, mushroom compost is another good one. I just picked if you have it's, access to it. It's awesome. Plants are responding really well to it. Real cheap, too. Oh, yeah. You can buy yeah. a big bag of mushroom compost for like three bucks. Well, I mean, you got to find some places that don't try to clink you. My place tried to. I called them. They're like eight bucks for a small bag. And I was like, all right. You know, it was the, the closest place. And then I got there and she was like, $12. I'm like, uh, no, you said eight. Yeah, my local guy does that to me. He knows what I want. I'll say, I, are you still got pro mix in stock? And he goes, yeah. And I'll say, okay. He'll say, 25 $26. And I get down there and every time it's like, oh, it's I'm sorry, it's $35. Okay, well, I'll only buy one or two instead of three or four. Okay. But yeah. I got get the same thing here. They that, that must be something to do with that ag that, that ag industry or whatever. <laughs> it's funny we both had the same problem. You they tell you one the price on the phone and you get down there and it's thirty percent more. Yeah. People flying by the seat of their pants. We kind of I kind of cut Steve off there. Steve, you're telling more soil amendments for cool root zone. Oh yeah, no worries. Um, uh, a little rock phosphate can help. A little dolomite can help as far as something that's like more time release, like slow release. Um, and then making sure you have, you know, 30%-ish either peat or coco core um, to add a little bit of aeration to it. But, you know, plus minus. You could, you, and you can always fiddle with that. Um, I probably do a slightly different mix every damn time. Um, I'm always tinkering and twiddling with that. Um, you know, I have a similar mix each time, but uh, depending on what I have laying around. Um, the other things I think I would say that it's important um, is really important is making sure you have a microbial inoculant, uh, you know, something like recharge or, you know, if you have a, one other one you prefer out there, um, use that as well. Um, or, uh, uh, you know, something like mammoth pea is really good to add in the beginning. Um, uh, and then uh, any mycorrhizae inoculants you're thinking about adding, also very good to add in the beginning uh, in that soil mix. Um, you know, really get the stage, getting them established early on uh, is definitely going to uh, dramatically improve the plant health. How does lime work in aquaponics, Steve? Uh, entirely depends on what your definition of lime is. Okay, like dolomitic lime, like for instance, because you were just talking about myocorzy and uh, and like like I'm a big proponent of ProMix. I use it on my farm all the time, and now I'm doing my meds in it too, and I've had most excellent results and it comes with uh it's got your mycorrhizae it's a you know peat moss mycorrhizae dolomitic lime perlite and vermiculite mm -hmm. so that's so like whenever is... somebody says how do you all make a soil i say well if i buy pro mix to start you know and then add what you want you know basically yeah. you know so other, i'm just other, wondering other good base mixes i've used out there before is fox farm you know i've used their happy frog and their ocean floor a happy frog for younger plants and then ocean floor for for repotting um when they go into their bigger pots you talk um, about ocean forest or is there a ocean floor? forest i'm sorry okay um i'm sorry what was your oh, I, there's another part piece to your question there me yeah the oh, lime well see so if you were using pro mix for in this situation i just wanted to make sure that lime wouldn't be detrimental to your fish as long as, no, 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 no. So dolomite will raise your pH a little bit, but that's about it. It adds adds calcium and magnesium. It's calcium magnesium carbonate, so it's kind of, you right. know, kind of like your CalMag. Right. Um, it, it's not super bioavailable, um, but it, it will be you know pretty quickly um, if you. Uh, it does dissolve well if it's especially you get it in a powdered form. But using it in this dual layer zone that you guys do, it, it's not going to hurt the fish. Oh, no, no, but I'm saying normally you would do a stolomite directly into the water column. Oh, oh, okay, okay. As okay. pH for, for calcium. Okay, that's the, the plants will uptake calcium better from the water column than if you put it into the soil zone. Um, you'll also screw with the pH in that soil zone far more if you dose the calcium there, and you don't want to swing the pH around wildly there with the mycorrhizae and everything. It, it just, they don't right. like it, so... I've um, heard that on the show. You want to pH, you need to do it very gently, very, very yep. gently. Yep. Or any, so you, anything, 
anything. Isn't that what I've learned on the show? <clears throat> Any changes you make to that water, it's very slowly and over time. I'm not in it right now. You don't need it in five minutes. You need fish alive in five minutes. And you take your time getting to where you need to be, right? Yep. Hey, Steve, have you, uh, for a mineral, have you heard of using seawater? Seawater? Like those seawater mixes where they strip the sodium out that you're talking about? Nope, just straight seawater. No, I would never do that. I've been using too much sodium. I have a, I don't know, I got on a YouTube kick. Uh, I think I actually <laughs> got the, the information off of uh, the podcast here. Uh, well, it was off a website that was recommended called Remineralize and uh, I, .org or something, and you can go out and find minerals, you know, like different mineral deposits, you know, from mountains and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know, around, and the one thing was seawater, and these guys have been doing experiments by using sea salt, by boiling it down, and uh, then adding that to their uh, to their crops. There's a whole bunch of people on YouTube, you know, using it on trees and different things like that, and they have really good results, and I've been using it as, as a foiler spray, and uh, I don't know, there's a lot of different things, uh, different minerals in there, apparently, uh, like to include molybdenum, um, you know, some phosphorus, and uh, I believe some potassium. But you know, it's just a bunch of trace minerals, and it's got like ninety trace minerals in it. Wow! Be good to mix with some optic foliar if you're going to try that. The the what you call it? Um, that one product he was talking about helps deliver it in uh, with the transport. That's it. it took me a minute to remember. Um, is uh you know you can combine with that but um yeah i wouldn't add it to the reservoir but you know foliar spraying would be fine there are some products out there that actually are seawater just like you're talking about but then they go ahead and separate the sodium um so it's much more safe for your soil and for, you know you don't yeah get any sodium burn or anything like that but in general hemp not specifically uh, medicinal cannabis but hemp in general is pretty sodium tolerant well yeah. it'll tolerate the 12 ppms in the soil or something pretty crazy uh, at least I remember reading an article about that. It was in an old, old article. But And two, if you look up uh, some Korean natural farming, uh, they use fermented seawater as well, and they don't, they're don't they not concerned about the sodium in it. Huh. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's um, it, it was actually developed um, by Maynard Murray or something like that, and he was a, a war doctor, I believe, in World War I or possibly two. But he, he ended up keeping some uh, sailors and soldiers alive when they ran out of blood and uh, the IV bags, the fluids, they ran out of that. So they started using uh, seawater uh, through an, an IV intravenously. And apparently seawater uh, has all the minerals in the, same, uh, in the same concentrations that human blood does, or that healthy human blood does. So he kept soldiers alive by... Uh, injecting uh, seawater into their veins when they that's were crazy. lost blood because they didn't have saline no, that's, yeah, that's crazy. exactly they ran out of saline so he just went over the side of the ship picked up some water <laughs> put it in the boys kept them alive and then he went on to use it on his uh use it on his farm and he did a bunch of research and he would have it uh, trucked in from the Atlantic, like a mile off the coast, and apparently that was that's where Maynard Murray said the best seawater is. And then, if you look at the Korean natural farming, they say the best seawater is brackish water because those yeah. those microbes that are in that that seawater are really falling nice. into your soil as well. And I've got brackish water about three miles away. That's well, there we go, mate. See, what y'all don't know, I don't talk about much because it's crazy. You know, y'all think I'm crazy, but I mean, I, you know that one of my things, I want to do the saltwater aquaponics thing and grow different stuff. Like I want to do the, I want to do the pistachio nuts and stuff like that with a, and somebody else, I read something the other day where somebody was talking about a saltwater. It ticks me off when I have an idea and I don't really implement it at all. And then some guy, you, some guy, uh, all of a sudden, there's a freaking national news story on the, on Yahoo or somewhere about some guy doing saltwater aquaponics. You know, yeah, so. I think it was in Australia or the Middle East or something. No, but I liked it. Somebody's doing it. I think I found three or four crops that are edible. 
I forget what they were. Well, pistachio nuts are grown in that kind of water. They're, you know, like in t tidal basins kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like a tidal, it's like an ebb and flow situation, the way pistachio mm -hmm. nuts grow. We've done some more research since last time we talked on it. And actually dummy, uh, aquaponic dummies did a lot of research and we, we read it all. And, and uh, yeah, it was really ball. neat. It's, huh? The Buster's balls for Yeah. I, I try to get him. He's still still going through some stuff. He he's sorry he's he can't be here. Um, I will tease him when he comes back. Don't worry. Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to get some giveaway tonight, but he didn't respond. I was trying to get something from our stock in the store, but I you know I always like to before I do it, I always like to have my partner agree with me that we should give away. So, you know, since it is his store, but you know, <laughs> give away all the stuff while he's gone. Shh. We're gonna give away all of Dummy's store. <laughs> all you gotta do is type in one, two, three, and shot. Go. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dummy would. Hey, Dummy's store for sale. You could buy his store, complete with a like a world class aquaponics operation in there. And even though he wants to leave, he continues to build it bigger. But I'm not gonna go too much into that because that's his story, and it wouldn't be fair. You know, you kind of like Marty. Like we're still, we've got to wait till next week to find out if the, it's a boy or a girl or what. Oh no, it's a girl. <laughs> Last week, remember, we were all kind of like, "Well, let Marty tell us," you know. Oh, did I? Sorry, I'm stoned. Well, we talked about it when you weren't around, when you were doing whatever you were doing over there off camera before the show, and then uh, we decided we'll wait for Marty instead of talking. If anybody knew, we'd wait. And then I asked you at the end, he goes, well, we're going to wait for Marty. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's supposed to be sitting at his science fair with his daughter until six. And then, uh, then he was going to hop on the show. So. But I guess he ran into baby duty again. So it's fine. It's family. Family. He's out with family. You can't say, oh, I got to oh, yeah, go do yeah, it. Yeah. You can't give him too much shit. He's out doing the, doing yeah, the bad thing. Family first, no matter what. Absolutely. I always got to take care of your girls first. The humankind and then the plant kind. Yep, any curls. Hmm. Well, here we go. <laughs> oh, I have one other thing. Fuck Hydro Galaxy. Um, <laughs> they, had a, they had a fucked up. I ordered a, a bubble machine and some other shit from them. And a month later, nothing. Won't return a phone call. Won't respond to email. Nothing. So, wow. Yeah. When it finally drove over to their location, they're like, oh, yeah, no, our online division's separate. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of think you're full of shit. Anyways, so went, screamed at them, had some fun. Called, so I ended up having to do a chargeback and all this other fun shit. So don't ever buy from them. So you don't use uh, PayPal when you buy from people like that? Oh, no, it was actually through Amazon, so I was able oh, to do that back, but, yeah. but no, it's, they're more just, painful. it's more painful for them if I do a chargeback. So. Oh, yeah, that, but that's it. So Amazon handles it if you get screwed. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah, yeah, Amazon covers yeah, it. Don't mess with them. They'll send a drone over. Boy, yeah. Well, no, no, that Amazon's real good about the fraud stuff. I mean, they're they're on it. Like, if you're even a couple of days too late <laughs> package as a vendor past the normal shipment time, they're, you know, was it three? I forget if it's two weeks or so many days. It'll it'll threaten you, and you can lose your uh, lose your account. So I've never had any problem with shipping. I've, in fact, shipping from Amazon. Not, not that we're gonna need to do a big Amazon commercial. We need sponsorship Amazon. Um, but they, they my shipping shipping from Amazon for me come in lightning fast. Of course, when I I decided. I got to where I buy stuff. I, I pay for the Amazon Prime. I don't have any use for it otherwise. But if you Amazon Prime, you do like thirty-five to fifty bucks with stuff. You get free shipping, and it comes like and they got distribution centers everywhere, and they're selling so much stuff now. It's not like it used to be that it was like eBay kind of. Now they sell you. You're buying it from Amazon. You're not buying it from some third party. You're buying. You're buying your stuff from Amazon half the time, except in your case with Galaxy Hydro. Well, I, just, I just went on Amazon and they were the vendor that was the cheapest for the same shit as everybody else and it was like well fuck yep. that's why we that's why we can't even we've got a distributorship for sunlight supply and hydro farm 
and we can't even buy something and and ship it to you for for the same price that you can buy it on Amazon. So we went through all this trouble, got out all these years. I wanted to have an online hydro store to find out that I can't buy something and sell it to you for any. For I might if I I might be able to make a dollar if I can, and I wouldn't mind if I could make a dollar. But most of the time, once I add in shipping to wherever, you know, for what it costs me to get from Hydro Farm or you know Sunset Supply, I can't even make a profit from you guys. It's more of a and then it's not worth running the business, so we've gone the affiliate route, you know. But sorry, I don't know why we got all you know Amazon selling, buying, you know. No, that's um, fine. It's a whole separate world. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. You know, I'm crazy. I mean, oh shoot. So what else is going on, man? Who's doing what? What are you doing? You're doing dad. You're not doing dad tonight, are you? Mm -hmm. No, I did two big ones before the, the beginning of the show. <laughs> So. I wish I lived in California. I think you know. I don't know. Well, I'd of, like land of infinite weed. Yeah, well, you know where you can, you know, go on there and just hey, look, see, if it looks like this. If of course you see me, I, I don't know if you've been paying attention to my screen, but you know, I show things every once in a while. If you're paying attention, you might get a candid let you know. You get a little shot. Like I showed you my seedlings earlier. I just kind of walked up and put them in front of the camera so you could see the five Rockwell cubes. Mm -hmm. You must have missed it. Oh, oh, look oh no, 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 I saw it earlier in the episode. I said nice. Oh, oh is that what you said? That that was the or it went hmm or something like that. Yeah, yeah. That's about. I just wanted to show you that was that. Drop it. Well, the way I do it, I won't go into that right now. But you know, with you doing your thing and all, but yeah, I just I love it. It's one step process, and in three days, my seeds are popping, and and. uh and then they and they just seem so healthy and so I mean I've got this you know the people said they have all these excuses for not using rock wool and I say I have not found any of that to be true all this thing about the pH suffering with pH and having the pH and all that as long as it's uh -huh. neutral as long as I've the water is neutral oh go ahead Steve I've had pH issues but see you're dealing with you got to go you're running through something you got to fish right and you want to keep pH lower than seven, right? What is the pH you're trying to run? Um, six, six point six, six point eight, six point six. Is it? Okay. Well, because it's inert and it and it washes at seven, seven. You know, pH washes neutral. So that's why I never have any problem with. It. But why do you? So I'd like to know, just for curious, because since you're not just some guy in the forum that I don't know if he's full of shit or not, uh, I'd like to hear your reasoning behind why you think you had. Or what was the application where you had uh, Rockwell? Because I will say Rockwell's not for everybody in every kind of grow method. But I just when I use it that, more, it works. I've just found that I have to have a you know a mix up my pH my solution that I soak them in maybe at like a pH of a six or six point two mm -hmm. in order to bring the pH down to like a seven for those seeds. Um, well, what is your water pH? Um, oh, use our own water. Well, no, no, I don't use RO, but I use a cold sterile, which um, kicks the water out at like 6.4. I don't understand why you'd have any trouble with Rockwell. I've never had any problem at all. I, I started out ph in it low to get it into that hydro range. And then I, you know, I read something one day and I tried it. And for the last eight to nine or 10 years, I've got neutral pH well water at 200 parts per million, and I use that. I soak them with warm water, shake it one time, not squish it at all. You can't squish it, but shake it, let all that big mass of water come out, and they're still soaking wet. Put my seed in, rip off a piece of corner, just pop, just lightly put the tub to the corner in the hole, and then a couple of days later, they're pushing that thing out. You see a little bump come up, and, and they're done. And I got pH 7 water. I do never pH the thing. I, I I don't see the argue. There's no roots to affect the plant. I guess there's an argument about seeds, but I've been germinating seeds for ten years at pH seven and never had a problem. And I, yeah, I get seven real is, high germination. Germinating them at seven is fine. Um, I'm just. I, I thought you meant what t you know pH they're on the systems at. Well, um, you said you had trouble with the pH of it, and I was going. Oh well, yeah, I've had problems with the uh, rock wool in the past with the pH with the rock wool. Um, and everything being pretty high, like, you know, upper sevens. What were you using? 
just as a put putting water, you know, 7.0 water in it that, you know. Oh, you mean started propagating in it? You mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But what I like to do um, is put my seeds in a, um, uh, soak them overnight, like for 24 to 48 hours in water, uh, let them crack. And as soon right. as I see the little tail come out and the seed crack, then I'll transfer them over to um, either soil or, you know, uh, a plug, you know, start Right, right. That, that's, that's a very. I mean, that's the way it's always been done, pretty much. You know, uh, I just, I just got, I just got tired. Of, well, and that's really more relevant to me. That would only be relevant if I had seeds that were questionable to me that might not pop, and then you're wasting rock. Okay. But if when I, I get a, all my seeds, one that I'm, if I have one, I really want to. Like, I only have one seed, and it's old, and it's like a really weird strain that I really want, or something like that. I'll yeah. do the um, seed sprout tea with the corn and the corn hormone. Um, and then which is you soak the corn husk, you know, a bunch of corn seeds in a glass of water, let them germinate, take the water from that, pour that off, and then use that and soak your seed in that. And then what I'll do is once it, that's, the tail cracks, I'll take that same hormone water and put that in a paper towel and put that um, uh, in a little tray in a ziploc above one of my lights um usually with like a like a washcloth or something on it and keep it warm keep it like 80 degrees um and that'll germinate that sucker and then once it grows really well and it gets a nice little tail and the head comes out then i can plant it right already with the two green leaves above the soil layer and the root at the cool. bottom and then I, can, I mean, I can baby the ever loving shit out of that plant. Um, that's what I've done when I have, you know, only one or two seeds left of certain strains or, you know, something that I, you know, happen to <laughs> that's really, acquire that's really through cool. one means or another or whatever. Um, you know, if you really need to baby them, uh, that really is the best way to do it. Because then you can guarantee that you don't have to worry about it getting fungal infection when it pops up. You don't have to worry about the seed, you know, getting stuck on the top. You don't have to worry about, you know, the, it not pushing the dirt out of the way. Or you, know, you, you get rid of a bunch of variables that can affect the plant when it's that small. I think when you know, probably the only thing again, I I, I look at people, and that's a sound that it's a really cool method and an idea for you know like your you know like I've got like I've got some like uh um thai land race and stuff like that that my friend from england said that means so just to go one seed you know so that sounds like a, a good way to do that for that kind of thing where he said because they're sativa crazy over there <laughs> nice pick uh but uh yeah I, I i just worry about people because you still what you all right so you're and then you're using a tweezer to, to put it into the medium is that what you're doing um yeah, then I'm taking tweezers or even, you know, very carefully doing it by hand and then putting it in. Okay. Usually I put them into soil pots. I just um, worry about trying to grab something that dainty with a tweezer. I said, you know, that people then they, they do that all the time. I know. I see it on the forum and then they go, they get a deformed plant and it's all messed up. And it, really, you can't, they've done nothing wrong as far as we teach you how to do it. And they're doing it the way you teach. And then it, you say, yeah, I think it's that transfer sometimes. Some people just don't have that ability. To I don't dainty. trust the pressure when I'm using tools with something right. delicate. At that right. Age. Thank you. I'd rather use my hands to where I know, you know, I'm not squeezing it or bending it or deforming it or snapping it. Um, you know, just be very careful. <laughs> right. I've always. That's what. Always, that's, what uh, that's why it's always good to have, uh, you know, little kids around, the little hands, the little seed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't have your kids do, but. Um, you know, if you happen to know a midget or something, you know, oh my God. have them over for a couple of beers. All right, we don't need any letters. <laughs> person. Maybe not a midget. Send your letters Sorry. to Steve. <laughs> yeah. As Marty was saying, send complaints and comments to Phonics at Gmail. <laughs> I'll just, I'll do it for him so that if he's watching secretly, he'll laugh. Maybe he'll even comment. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, but yeah. So so, Kurt, when you were on the 420 show, that was the first night I was in the show. Uh, were you were you, were you the second speaker that night? I don't know. I probably just laughed too much. Yeah, were you we had a K before yeah. your coyote grows. Yeah. Okay. That, 
Because we had to, we, who was the fellow, who, like, I always ask, sorry to ask this, because I'm new, so, you know, because I've only been here a month. Um, who was the fellow, the, the cancer survivor and veteran from, that was in the van doing the podcast? Sitting in his car. Oh, from his car? Yeah. That was your writer. Yo, Ryder. Okay. Was he a vet, okay. Steve? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he was a vet too. Oh, wow. Now I'm not. You called me a vet. I'm not a veteran. I'm not a veteran. I'm I'm an Air Force brat. So my dad's a veteran. So I just wanted to clarify. It. I don't want to mislead you because that's the wrong thing to do. I'm not a veteran. Oh, gotcha. Well, I thought. But you're you're heavily involved with veterans. I mean, I knew that's what you were talking about. Right. I, I, in fact, uh, since we bring it up, if Steve doesn't mind, um, uh, I, I, I'm looking. I, I had a couple guys from the forum and in the new chat thing that I'm building, I was going to give a department to veterans for free. But my guy quit. So I don't have anybody to do like man to man to chat or you like to set up appointments to talk with veterans that need support from other veterans because I think that's the only way to do it. They don't want to talk to me. I can't. They can't talk to me about what happened in Fallujah. They can't. They got to talk to a guy like you, you know. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to set up. And I lost that ability. So you know, and I've talked to him about this on the show over the last couple of weeks. And Steve gives me a chance uh, to to say something about what I'm doing. And I really am looking for somebody. So if you're interested, we can maybe get back channeled. And uh, I'd like to have you maybe come on the staff and run the veterans desk. Yeah. And well, I'm, not, I'm not really computer savvy, but I'll give it a shot. That sounds good. Well, you know, yeah, hit, uh, yeah, send me an email. We'll see what's what's involved. And uh, we can go from okay. there. Okay. Well, Steve, if you can hook us up with emails, that'd be cool. So uh, I'll hit you in our group chat. Well, I'm blind, so I kind of don't do the group chat too much. But if you give me something right now, I'll know it's right there. So That's what I was saying. I'll do the group chat right now that you just, you know, the one that you posted a minute ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can take the yeah, I'll give you his email there. Okay, thank you. And yeah, if you're interested or know anybody else that might be. And the funny thing about our, our service, part of our service is going to be a basic computer skills department because – I, we, I'm teaching people, 45 to 65 veterans and uh, retired people that were on pharmaceuticals that finally, when all that information came out a few years ago, when the Library of Congress had to release all the government studies that proved marijuana was actually medically founded and uh, didn't wasn't a class A narcotic and all other stuff. You got, I mean, we got judges, military, cops, lawyers, scientists, teachers professors i teach they're 60 years old learning how to grow pot for the first time and they don't even know how to copy and paste and i love you guys if anybody you guys are watching there's nothing personal but i, I decided that it'd be smart because the the in the onslaught of new cannabis growers that i'm seeing out there they are they are vet, they're veterans and retired people I mean, I swear, it, it's like the, the the stoner punk, you know, at least on our forum. I mean, there's a lot of forums. If you want to go argue with 20-year-olds, you can. But on our forum, it's 45 to 65. I mean, we got young 20-year-olds and stuff, and some of our veterans are young, of course, because, you know, um, just like you. Uh, but we've got a lot of a lot of 50-year-olds and stuff. And, that, and so, anyway, I'm, I, I, I digress. Somebody sent me a message. Let me check that. I think well, that was I me. Sent me a message. Oh, that was you. Yeah. Okay. Send you his email. <laughs> send you his email. So. Oh, cool! You did that stack. Oh, cool! Like now, I won't lose it. All right. Thank you very much. Very much. I'll be yeah. in touch, Kurt. Did you wanna... Kurt? Yeah. Sounds great. With Sounds Kurt great. with a K. What? Kurt with a K. Yeah. Like Kurt Russell. All right. I keep forgetting my camera's over here. I go, I give you this, and I'm just pointing at Steve's face on the TV. See? Yeah. What? What? Uh. What? What? What service were you in? The army. You're in the army. Yeah. That, well, thank you very much. For oh, you're welcome. I was proud to do it. Yep. Thank you. And um, okay, with that, the veteran chat idea of session of the show is over, and we'll take it back to our host. Steve, <laughs> you guys have any other topics um, you guys wanted to touch on? If not, I think we're going to wrap things up.
No, thank. Oh, thanks for posting the uh, the podcast on the forum today. I have to. I have, I've been. I've been so busy. I need to start that podcast category. Uh, but thanks for posting that today in the aquaponics section. I, I well, we, I don't know if we picked up anybody or not. I honestly don't know if anybody from the forum was one of those four or five people. Anybody in the forum? No news tonight. What? I mean, we're quitting already. No news. Oh, news. The news is <laughs> moving to another show. I'm gonna have a <laughs> just, show. Called, uh, yeah, I'm just for those of you who missed it at the beginning. Uh, we we have a new show called. Um, last week in cannabis which will be just news articles and you know covering events and uh, legislation and you know trying to get more into that kind of stuff and, and making this show more of a grow show so you're a john oliver fan too huh yeah <laughs> i like that i, 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 was, I was looking it. for uh well what came down to is i was looking for like cannabis news show that wasn't already then it wasn't already taken in social media and stuff like that that they could get that's perfect i love it last week in cannabis that's perfect because you limit to last week you know and then you got your shows i just like i love his show after he got out you know after the daily show that was i laughed my ass off i can't wait to watch that show on Sunday. sorry so you were plugging your 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 show and i plugged freaking you know comedy central or something so <laughs> oh, yeah, be sure to check that out. It's on Monday. I think we'll probably end up moving the show to Tuesdays. Um, but this this episode coming up will be on Monday. Um, uh, just because of travel, we'll end up in airports a lot on Mondays, so it'd be harder for me to commit. Um, or you know, hey, it might not, it might bounce around a little bit. Um, but I think that's going to be the uh, the layout. So I'm not 100 percent sure who's going to be on the show with me. I know we had a couple people that were interested, um, and in being on the show. So we'll see. Uh. What the regular crew ends up being for that show as well, but it'll be uh, everyone from the show also have an invite to that one. So, um, uh, yeah. Everybody uh, bring a also, news article like a, like a picnic. <laughs> uh, also, be sure to check out OrborosFarms.com. Um, he's got a bunch of cool stuff going on over there. Um, yeah, I know he's got a couple new cool stuff uh he was talking about on on one of the facebook groups um so definitely be sure to check them out if you're looking for more classes uh, i know he has um you know various classes over there i teach the cannabis and the um medicinal herb and he has a whole bunch of other classes available as well um do you guys have uh anything else you guys want to plug um you guys want to plug your different youtube channels and and your other stuff yeah, I'll, uh, I'm just getting my channel started, uh, but come on over to the uh, Facebook group. Let's uh, chat. Let's discuss. Let's exchange some ideas. Um, you know, I've been uh, trying to participate in that more. It's been a lot more fun. Yeah, the Facebook, for those of you guys who don't know, is uh, Aquaponic Cannabis Growers on Facebook. Oh, that's, that's yours, Kurt? Aquaponic Cannabis Growers? No, uh, no, I founded that actually. Oh, 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 oh I, okay. I missed that. Oh, that's where it's going to be. I don't know. I must be zoning out. So. Oh no, no, no. We have a, we have a group. It's actually we're approaching two thousand, uh, two thousand members now. We actually, wow. I know. I feel like it was like what two or three months ago we hit a thousand. We really rapidly grown the last couple of months. Uh, we've awesome. had a lot of really cool guests, and everyone's really responded well to it. So. Um, I apologize for having a couple of guest problems the last couple, last, this week and last week, but uh, we'll end up, um, next week we're going to have Mammoth Peace, so we're, we're going to be back on back on track with a vengeance. And then we have a, a couple of other cool people. We have a, a really cool guy I ended up talking to at the DDC Cup. He's going to talk to us about dehumidifiers. Um, we have Black Dog LED is going to be on the show. Um, it'd be kind of cool to hear from, from them, especially after... Uh, is uh, side by side um you know he was not going to be releasing his results uh for for at least another month or two for until he gets you know ships and stuff off for testing so it's kind of cool to have them on uh you know beforehand and then um you know do a do a whole wrap-up show with with, with fish, fish ganja guy on his on his thing i know he's gonna have a big long presentation on his youtube but uh we'll definitely have a, a little piece on that um 
And uh, yeah, we have a couple of other cool guests we're working on um, that I'm in email chats with that I won't I won't tell you guys about yet. But grow, did you wanna or brain grow? Do you wanna? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get it right. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, just uh, check out my YouTube channel, B R A Y N E G R O, and my Instagram. Just throw an underscore in between brain and grow. Um, I just barely uploaded my uh, mushroom CO2 production video earlier this week, and I actually um, I did post that in the Facebook group. So that's in there if anybody who's watching this is part of the Facebook group and interested in checking that out. And then uh, hopefully uh, I'll just say before next Growing With Fishes podcast episode comes on, I will have my uh, fully finished update for my uh, breeding chamber, my uh, aquaponic breeding chamber. So that'll be pretty dope and I'm looking forward to finally getting that uploaded um and then also uh like i mentioned earlier i'm working on uh, i've actually already built my uh frames for my uh my uh dry sift station on top of my grow box so uh, i'll be doing a video on that and how you can build your own uh dry sift screens cheaply six so that's nice yeah that'll be great now, is that the the hand sifting kind, or are you talking like the tumbler kind? No, just like the hand sifting screen. Okay. Very cool. I, mean, you, I guess I, I, you could adapt a you could adapt a tumbling design pretty easily, and I may do that in the future because I'm going to have some extra fabric to work with. But um, yeah. I got I got one I use for because I grow in my greenhouse. I grow in perlite in, in poly bags, and I spray to waste. And uh, and so the end I get to do these all these roots in there. And but I like to I re, I reuse everything. I just clean it up and reuse it, you know, as I as I see fit, and and as well as implementing new every season. And uh, I find a sifting. That's what, I use that same kind of wire, like on a bingo, one of those, like you said, the the, the canister or whatever spins around a drum. You know, that's what I just use that and put it on some wood. You know, put a made a wood frame on both sides and and just start, like well with little sides that come up so you can dump all the perlite in there and sift it and all the root matter stays in the in the screen. So that's not what you're using it for, but I had to throw that out there. You know. <laughs> Slow show, right? <laughs> all righty um I'll wrap things up uh, uh did you want to plug your uh, forums there uh, roger well i work every day at i love growing marijuana.com and you know we've got some of the best genetics i've ever seen on the planet and uh and i even i, I even so uh, they've come out with a new fertilizer this year that uh or nutrient uh, water soluble powder nutrient that is unbelievable and easy to use and uh it's all you need and i tried it i did it came excellent grow and uh a very high quality with it and uh if come see us at i love growing marijuana.com and we've got a bunch of great grow experts uh uh aquaponic dummy works there with us he's a moderator uh and uh we got some other guys we've got a lot of really good members and it's the friendliest forum like i know how like we've all gravitated to these podcasts and all these groups on Facebook, but, and we don't do as forums as much. And I don't go to any other forum. I had to work for the company a couple of years ago where they wanted me, I needed to make some more money. So they told me, well, why don't you go to these other forums and kind of develop relationships and establish something. And I didn't, and uh, I guess that's going to be on the plug. But the thing is, is that you come to, I love growing marijuana.com. It's friendly. It's friendly. It's a mature forum. You're not going to get cussed out and told to go fuck off. And if you do, I'm going to kick the member's ass. And, um, you know, we have a good time there. We build, you know, we've got a nice member's lounge and all. It's, it's like, um, uh, we actually got Steve to join. I got Steve to join this past week, and that's what I was talking about. He posted his aquaponics show there. And uh, thank you very much, Steve. That's great to have you come and support our forum a little bit. Um, 
the guy, a couple of guys are chomping at the bit, but uh, I kind of bummed out because with Domi's situation, he's not been around much, and I was kind of thinking y'all would, you know, come up with something, and that would be cool. But, uh, well, I'll just have to wait till he comes out of his funk. That's fine. We'll get him back on the show soon. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah. Go over my background. <laughs> Got a little studio here, so it's kind of cool. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, be sure to check out um, uh, Marty's channel over at uh, AP Meds. Um, check out Fish Ganja Guy, Fish Ganja Guy on YouTube. Um, Marty also has a Patreon. I think it's AP Meds as well. Um, check that out. And uh, check my YouTube channel out, Potent Ponix. Um, again, I'm going to start a new YouTube channel, blah, 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 new YouTube series. Um, I have a <laughs> bunch of content. I've already done scripts for. I just got to sit down and record the, the talking and throw a few slides together for each episode. Um, but I'm going to do a couple little short YouTube videos. that will be a little, um, some graphics and stuff like that. It'll be kind of cool. Um, and, and we're going to cover some different topics. Um, uh, yeah, I have a list of over 100 topics I think we're going to try and cover. Um, and I'm sure we'll, you all will come up with more after I answer that stuff. So, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're going to cover, uh, you know, what you shouldn't add, what you should add, uh, maybe a good recommended dosage per that. So that, you know, basically just, uh, so you can go on to your store and look up, you know, grab up something off the shelf and, uh, buy it, take it home and look on the YouTube channel, look at all the ingredients and, you know, get an answer. Hey, is this ingredient okay? Is this ingredient okay? Is this ingredient okay? Oh, this one isn't okay. Okay, shit. All right, well, I can't use it. You know, oh, something awesome. like that. So, um, you know, that, that that's coming down the pipeline. Um, I'm uh, just trying to get it done last weekend. Um, had some stuff come up, but I think this weekend will hopefully be a little easier to try and do that. So, anyways, um, give me a chance. Uh, give, um, yeah, uh, definitely check me out at Potent Ponics YouTube. Um, the website is also potentponics.com. <coughs> potentponics at gmail.com if you have a question for the show. Um, and yeah, if you have a, any other good guests, um, we're def- you know, I have a list of guests, for, but we're always looking for more. I'm happy to take suggestions, or if you have contacts, um, definitely let us know and uh, we'll get them on the show. Um, Alrighty, uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Uh, take care. Cheers. Peace. Bye now. Kurt, I'll be in touch.